You guys, I'm here in Hawaii. I was driving up the street. I look in the garage and I see a poster of my grandfather on some random wall. So I put on my gi and I just walked in hoping for the best. Little did I know the best was right here. You guys, I recognize him. You guys, I'm sure recognize him. Alex O'Loughlin from Hawaii Five-O. You guys didn't know he gets down like this and you probably didn't recognize him in this uniform. Okay, it's a whole different level. Talk to us briefly about your jiu-jitsu journey and how fun it's been. I love jiu-jitsu, it's, it's, uh, it's everything to me, man. That's why I built a gym at my house. It's been about seven years now. And uh, yeah, you guys have been a part of it, man. That's you know? what's up, man. He's had some highs and lows, you know, injuries like we all have, bumps and bruises that take us off and bring us back. But uh, he's definitely back right now, and he and I are here with our families, and we weren't gonna miss the opportunity to come see our friend here and go over some techniques, and we've talked about some new concepts, tying the rope, triple threat. I'm on the hype, so I got him on the hype. Tell him about the hype. It's crazy, this system of like tying the rope for an Armin guillotine sort of set up, or Armin Dars, and the, uh, and, the, and the series of events that happened from that are disastrous. It's things. crazy, it's guys. Down to you, so. so as we wrapped it up, we first we talked about all the triple threat, threat, threat options, and then I told them, I said, listen, the triple threat, guillotine, Armin, all of that is a very 2017, you know, that's where I was last <laughs> two, three years, that's where I was, but this year, Things have changed. And there's one attack that I'm doing from the side mount right now. It's a uh, armless guillotine. It's a armless guillotine, and it's a one-handed guillotine from the side mount that we're very excited about right now. So Alex, if I can have you lay down with your feet that way. And we were just talking different ways of isolating people's arms away from their body. And one of the most exciting ones right now is just the idea of being neon belly, or let's say we're passing a guard here, and we step around, and he starts to push off my body. This idea of instant isolation, trapping it, and using my shins to pin it out. Now it's out of the fight. Normally this arm will be right here, but I don't like this arm on this side of my neck, right? So I have to get it to the other side. So I'm gonna take a north frame, swim inside, grab my own wrist, stretch it out, put my head on the ground. He's gonna naturally come up and hug my neck, and I got him in the crucifix right here. Now that we're here, I'm controlling the situation. All I want is him to turn to his side just a little bit. Sometimes they cooperate because they don't like that their face is strikeable or a chokeable right there. And if they don't cooperate, they try to stay stubborn, I'll come around and just start to grab and poke and mess with his neck a little bit. And it's annoying enough to get him to turn. Once he turns, we shoot in, put the wrist right in the trachea, head down, toes down, knee switch, sprawl, and tell him, be honest, bro. It sucks so bad. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> so Alex is passing my guard right here. He's coming around. The second he passes, the guy goes here, a little knee switch, awesome. He melts, slow. Because this hand's on the wrong side right here, the front tape. So we're gonna do a nice little north frame. Look at his hand come in. He grabs, he pushes it out, he gets his head on the inside of it. Then the second he lets go of it, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hug. The problem is I land in a perfect crucifix right here. So now he's gonna keep nice control. And then from here, he wants me on my side, so he'll mess with my neck a little bit. The guy starts to get, because they were, here's what's crazy. Some guys try not to respect it right here. I grab their throat, and they don't tear it. They tap. Guys, tap right here because they don't want to turn and get caught in the one-handed guillotine. So I don't mind. Either one. A tap is a tap right here. But more often than not, they get grabbed. They do this. The hand comes in slow. And now from here, he puts his head forward, toes in the mat, tripod and switch, melt the hips. How'd it feel, man? Oh, you guys, it's crazy. And what's crazy is you didn't really believe it. When I told the one-handed guillotine, he was like, man, I don't know, man. That sounds a little bit not that strong. It's crazy it's strong. Crazy. Yeah, because it incorporates the entire rib cage, right? Yes. So that's that entire, it's, you got to feel like it's all cool. <laughs> You guys, I explore with this one. The, what were the key details we were talking about is not letting the person get on their side. And I'll do it to Alex one more time from that final position already, where if I'm here and I have the split and I switch my legs already and I have this and he's on his side and I punch in and I wrap, all I'm trying to do, you guys, is place this part of my wrist and my thumb right on one artery. You don't have to get this arm around the full front of the neck. Literally just plug one side. Your rib cage is going to plug the other side. So don't think of both arteries, just punch in. In order to punch in, your elbow must not be high. Watch my elbow, it must be low so I can get in front of that front artery, that side artery there. Once I get that, I lower my head to the mat, toes on the mat, and my goal is to keep Alex's arm from coming up to the north, you see? Because if, if my toes are like this, bring your hand up, he'll defend the neck, go back. But if I go here, bring the hand back in, bring your right hand in. You can't get it in, so I'm laying my hips on it, bring it under my leg, bring it under my leg. Look, I'm just barely blocking, now I melt my hips, and he's out right there. And the most common mistake here is people let the opponent turn on their side, like this. If he turns, there's no pressure. There's no pressure on the arteries, both arteries, if he turns. So you have to keep this shoulder stapled to the mat. So the number one advice I have to give my students, and the reason they have trouble with that is because when they go to sprawl, they sprawl their feet like this. Turn your side, bro. That's too easy for Alex to turn, go back. 
Now watch my toes. If I'm like this on my toes, my knees on the ground, toes on the mat, and I'm driving, turn on your side. Can't. Oh. You gotta keep your toes on the mat, shoulders pinned to the ground, hips and ribs smash one artery, blade cuts into the other one, and I pick the head off the ground about two inches. Guaranteed every single time. The hardest part of this move isn't the squeeze. Once you understand it, you understand it. It's getting the limbs isolated. So rewind, go back, watch that initial setup. We're using that cross knee right from the on belly. It doesn't have to be from the guard pass. It could be knee on belly. I can be perfectly defending. Watch, he's gonna pin my arm down, knee switch, melt the hips, and pin the wrist. Ah, oh, it's such a good detail. Enough, bro. Too much detail for them. <laughs> Too much detail for a Monday morning. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Anything else you wanna to say to our friends out there? Because there are some viewers, believe it or not, who have not embarked on the journey yet. What would you say to them in terms of getting them off the couch and onto the mat? It's, it's, it's the greatest martial art on earth, man. I'll tell you what, the one that my favorite thing about jiu-jitsu is that I'm faced with my greatest opponent every day, which is not another guy in the ring. It's, it's this, my head. So <sighs> it's amazing. And just when you think you got it figured out, there's always someone else to make your life miserable and to create a new Rubik's Cube equation. The funny part is I'm pointing over there to my brother who's not here right now, so I get to be the boss, but man, he don't walks in here, then life is miserable all over again for all of us. So, <laughs> and uh, he'll, he'll, he said the same about me, that's what's funny, but um, it, that's what makes it so beautiful. There's always someone to help you sharpen the sword, to make your life miserable, and when you think you got it figured out, it's just, you add a new element, or you add a new triple threat, or a new technique, and it's like a kid with a new toy, you guys. Yeah. Kids have their toys, so we should have ours as well. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu, let it be yours. Much respect, find a certified training center. We have a school here, Todd Tanaka, Team HK, runs a CTC here in Oahu, as well as Central Oahu, we have uh, Ryan and Noel doing a great job, and CTCs all over the world, gracieuniversity.com, learn from home, got a garage like this, set up a Gracie garage, bro. He's already got it going over here. So, no excuses, make it happen. Thanks for having me, bro. Jiu-Jitsu.